the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So then, my name is Bishop Joseph Pfeiffer, and it's a great privilege to be here in Nigeria, in Africa, and uh, is it Potuko? Yeah. Potuko. Potuko. Your town. And uh, it was a very, very, very great privilege to be able to be here. This is my first time coming to the great land of Africa and to Nigeria. And I'm a priest of the Society of St. Maya X. Marian Corps. Our society was founded by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre in 1970. And I am continuing the work of Archbishop Lefebvre in this time of the crisis of our church. And so that uh, our Bishop of the Feb did great work here in Africa, and it's a great privilege to be able to set foot finally on the ground where he was many years. And also know that there is only one answer to every problem, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one purpose of all things on this planet, and of every man, every woman, and every child, whether they are Catholic, or Buddhists, or Hindus, or animists, or atheists, doesn't matter what kind of religion that people claim that they have, there is only one God who created the heavens and the earth. This God wants us to be happy. And there is only one way for us to be happy. And that is to know Him with our minds, to love Him with our hearts, and to serve Him with all our might and all our bodies. This is the only way to be a real man. We were made to know, love, and serve God. And by this means, to be happy with Him in heaven forever. And when we decide to know, love, and serve God, we live happily with each other. We were made to be together in one society. One society under one head. And that head is the Holy Father in Rome. God made things that way from the very, very beginning. Adam was the first head of our Holy Church. He was. And Adam was given power by God. Adam was given grace by God. Adam was given a most beautiful wife, Eve, who was made from his own side. And Adam decided to sin by pride, and thereby bring death into the world. There are over 7 billion people on the planet Earth right now, which is not enough. Even the demonic uh, World Health Organization, run by a man called Lucifer, even the demonic World Health Organization notes that the world at its present state can easily sustain 25 billion people. And they tell you the world is overpopulated. They are liars from hell. When God created the world, He created it so that it could be peopled by us. He created it so that we would go through this world and live in every part of it. He told Adam and Eve, whom he made to his side, increase and multiply, 
and people the earth. Modern man hates God and does not want to obey him. It is absolutely necessary for us to fulfill our role to know, love, and serve God. That's why we're here. The most sacred thing that a man can do is offer his life only to know, love, and serve God. And that is the reason why in the last 2,000 years since our Lord Jesus Christ became man, died on the cross for our sins, and founded his holy church, his bride. The church is the bride of Christ, most beautiful bride. And this bride is to have countless children. God told Abraham that he would have more children than there are stars in the skies. He would have so many children. And we are the true children of Abraham when we belong to the church that he is the father, grandfather of. The church of his great grandson, who is also the God that created him, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say about Abraham to the Jews? He said to them, Abraham rejoiced that he might see my day. Abraham saw it and was glad. Abraham saw the day of Jesus Christ and he was glad. The day in which Jesus Christ would die on the cross for our sins. The day that he would conquer Satan. The day the Blessed Virgin Mary would crush the head of the serpent as she stood at the foot of the Holy Cross. And for Sister Mary Therese of the Crucified Lord. It is a day to be standing at the foot of the cross as Mary did. When a woman stands at the foot of the cross, she looks up to our Lord Jesus Christ. She looks up to our Lord hanging on the cross, and she believes firmly in his victory. She believes firmly in his victory over Satan and over the enemies. And where are those enemies located? They are also at the foot of the cross. Caiaphas is there at the cross, and he mocks Jesus Christ. Annas is there at the cross. George Soros is there at the cross. Joe Biden is there at the cross. The wicked leaders of the world right now in the year 2021, stand at the foot of the cross and they mock Jesus Christ. They say to him, if thou art the Son of God, come down and we will believe. Driving into your city for the first time, very beautiful thing. I was a priest of Asia, in India, in the Philippines. What is in the heart of Jesus Christ when he goes into a poor place? And what is the heart of the modern man? 
The modern priest says we must end poverty. The modern church says let us end poverty. But what did Jesus Christ say? One day they came to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. And they said, St. John the Baptist sent us to speak to you. What are we going to tell St. John? Our Lord said, you go and tell St. John what you have seen and what you have heard. Behold, the blind see. They that were blind, they now see. The lame walk. Those that could not walk, now they can walk. The lepers, filled with the filth of sin, they are cleansed. They are no longer filthy. And the poor stay poor. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not come to end poverty. He ended his own days in total poverty. But what did he say about the poor? He said, the poor have the gospel preached unto them. What does poor, a poor man need? What does a poor woman need? What does a poor child need? What does our poor world <coughs> need? It needs the gospel preached unto them. This is what is necessary for our world. There are many wicked men in the church today, and they want to end their own poverty in this world. They want to live a comfortable life. And they believe what Jesus Christ said when he said, the poor you will always have with you. Remember, it was the priests that complained about poverty. The priest's name was Judas Iscariot. He was a priest and a bishop of the church. And Judas complained and was scandalized because the poor were not being taken care of. And a few days before Jesus Christ died, Mary Magdalene took a vial of alabaster oil worth one year's wages. That's very expensive oil. Worth one year's wages. Or as Bishop Fulton Sheen said, it was worth 300 denarii. That's what it says in the gospel. It was worth 300 denarii, about 10 times what Jesus Christ was worth. He was only worth 30. Jesus Christ was sold for 30 pieces of silver, but this one was worth 300 pieces of silver. And she broke open the bottle and wasted it. What a waste. On the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the priest was scandalized. This is Vatican II. It is a Vatican II of Judas's. The new church is a church of Judas's with the priesthood of Judas in their hearts. Because what do these modern priests say? Living in their very fancy rectories. They say we must end poverty. What does Pope Francis say? We must end poverty. To what purpose is this waste? Why does the church take a life, a beautiful young girl, and have her begin to say today, 
I give my life over to poverty. I give up all my possessions, even the possession of my own will. This is the hardest possession for us to give up. Why does she do that? Our God made the heavens and the earth. Our God sustains every atom and molecule in the universe. He holds the stars and he holds the heavens in his hand. He really does. And he became man. And there wasn't a place for him in an end. He became man, and he couldn't afford to be born in a house. He chose to be born in a cave along with cows and goats and chickens. He chose to live in poverty. Remember what he said when he walked the earth during his three and a half years? He said, the birds have their nests. The foxes have their dens, but the Son of Man does not have a place where he can lay his head. Why did Jesus Christ want this? He also taught us a secret. God's delight is to be with the sons of men. That's what he said in the Holy Scripture. My delight is to be with the sons of men. This is where I want to be. And he didn't want to travel too heavy. He traveled light. He didn't travel heavy. He delighted to be in the, with the sons of men. And what makes us men what makes us different from all the other animals that God created? We were made to know and love truth. We were made to make free choices of love, making us like unto the angels. And God wants us to make free choices of love. Do we love Him? We need sisters. We need brothers and moms. We need young men to give up their lives in this world, to go to give themselves as priests of God, just for the sake of love. The modern world speaks of love so much, but the only thing the modern world loves is self. And that is why people today are taking medications. And people today are want to commit suicide. And people today are in such misery because they love themselves. They love emptiness. We were made to know and love and serve God. And all men on earth were made to know, love, and serve God. And when a priest goes into the world, and a young sister wears her habit and goes into the world, a young man wears his cassock and goes into the world, he is telling the world there is something more valuable than the foolish treasures of money which disappear, the foolish treasures of this earth, and that is the pearl of great price, which is our holy faith. The kingdom of God on earth. We need this kingdom, and we must not try to find a foolish substitute for heaven. Heaven is with God above. This earth is a place of getting ready for heaven. 
when one becomes a religious, one enters into the life of simply preparing for heaven, of simply living to know and love and serve God perfectly. And in this way, be a great help to our Holy Mother, the Church. There's no other way to be a, no better way to be a great help to the Church. And St. Augustine adds these words. St. Augustine says, you young ladies, why do you seek a husband who will grow old? and who will leave you a widow. Young girls wish to marry, says St. Augustine, but when they marry a man, he will simply grow old. He may forget about you. He will leave you a widow. Why not marry our Lord Jesus Christ and enter into the religious life and be the spouse of Christ who never grows old, who will never leave you a widow, who will always think of you, who will always love you, and will always care for you, and will never in the slightest way ever be unfaithful. Why not seek such a love? The problem of modern man is that he is too small a heart. He has too wimpy of desires. He has too low of a goal. He just wants to survive and get money and then die. We were made for so much more than that. Let us live for more than that. There is only one church that can give us the tools, the means, to truly know, truly love, and truly serve the God who created us, the only true God, the God that became man, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the God that sanctifies us in the Holy Ghost, the God that created us, the Father, the God that is going to judge us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We were made to know, love, and serve this true God and let us live our lives to do so. And also I forgot to mention, God will bless you for waiting for such a long time for myself to come and the 30 hour journey from Lagos to here. Many adventures between Lagos and here yesterday morning until now. It ended up being a longer drive than expected. But it is good patience for you. And the angels count every minute that you set aside for God. And they will reward you for every minute that you had to wait, mass being many hours late. But God will reward you as he did the monks who gave themselves over for God. Remember that we were made to know, love, and serve God. This can only be done in the true church. The primary way in which we know, love, and serve God in a public manner is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And this Latin Mass is the only true Mass. The Novus Ordo Mass is not of God. It was sent from the devil. And that council, which is called the, the, the evil council, prophesied by the Blessed Virgin Mary, which has led many souls away from God. We must bring souls back to God. And that means true Mass. That means true faith. And that means living according to that true Mass and true faith in our lives. And the most sacred way to do that is to give oneself over as a religious, as a sister, as a brother. It's a great privilege for me to be able to bless the habit of a sister, to receive her great gift, a true wedding, a true wedding, again, going from her wedding dress into her new wedding dress for the rest of her life. Pray that there be more vocations. We need more vocations. 
Pray for these more vocations of souls who will truly give themselves over only to know, love, and serve God in this world so that we can be happy with Him in the next. I close that to you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.